Question says you can do all the calculations without actually knowing Earth's mass or radius. And um, I wanted to show you what we physicists call scaling argument. It's a way to do quickly, um, it's a way to do mental calculation quickly and accurately and without any extraneous work. And this is really why we uh, emphasize working out your expressions algebraically so much because it's only when you have analytical expression that you are able to apply this scaling argument. So um, it says calculate the values of G at Earth's surface for the following changes in Earth's properties. And what's good for you to know here is that this background knowledge that the, according to Newton's law of universal gravitation, gravitational force, so the, here's my Earth, here's an object of mass M uh, near the surface of the Earth then there's gonna be a gravitational force pulling it down. And the gravitational force is equal to G times product of the masses, um, or mass of the earth times the mass of the object divided by distance squared. And here the relevant distance is the distance from the center of the earth, the radius of the earth. So radius of the earth squared. Now this is the, Gravitational force according to Newton's law of universal gravitation. And you are used to seeing this in a different form earlier. Um, mg, or switching that around a little bit, g times m. And this is where identifying this m as the factor that factors out, you recognize this as giving you expression for g. And in fact, if you do know the mass of the Earth and radius of the Earth, then you can calculate G that way. But this is, is where I want to have my starting point, that the gravitational acceleration at the near the surface of the Earth, which is equal to 9.8 meter per second squared, is equal to uh, this expression here, G, a constant, so I guess it won't be changing times the mass of the earth divided by radius of the earth squared. So here's where you can, uh, this is the starting point for the quick and accurate scaling relationship argument. So each of these expressions are giving you how the mass is changing and radius is changing, or it's giving you change of mass and radius in terms of density, which we'll work through. The first one is easier. It says, how will this change? If uh, the mass is quarter, then the radius is quadruple. So this is what I kind of imagine doing. So I'm going to be dealing with a new, I don't want that color. Um, so I'm going to be dealing with a new value of G. And for this new value of G, what I have is the mass with the changes described, um, I guess quarter, so divide by four, and radius change as described. Um, it's quadrupled, and I need to remember to square. So what we are, uh, combine all these numerical factors, which is one fourth times one over four squared. So it's a four to the third power, uh, one over 64 times GME over R e squared. So in a scaling argument, what you try to do is you try to isolate a quantity that you already knew. So this is why I don't need to know the mass of the earth or the radius of the earth. I don't need to know those individual parts. All I need to know is this combination, 9.8 meter per second squared, and then apply this scaling factor here. So let me do the calculation, 9.8 divided by 64. So 0 0.153, 0 0.153. Now the parts of B and C require a little bit more work because uh, it's giving me information in terms, of, um, in terms of density instead of giving me mass directly. So when it says density is tripled and the radius is unchanged, then you know, technically we haven't covered the density in this class yet, 
um, mainly because we skipped the fluid chapter, uh, which we'll get back to. But I think most of you know the definition of density. The definition of density is mass per volume. That's the definition of density. And um, I, I think that makes the, the first part be easier to answer. So let me answer that first. So, so this is what I want you to think through. It says that the radius is unchanged. All right, so the size of the earth, whatever it is, remains the same. But it's giving me this information that the density is tripled. What does that, what kind of implication does that have for the, for the mass? So that's where you look to this expression for yet another scaling argument. So you see that density is proportional to mass or the other way around, mass is proportional to, uh, mass is proportional to density. So, so if density tripled and the volume stay the same, then if density tripled and the volume stays the same, then the mass must have tripled too. So I'm then looking back at here, G is equal to this quantity, uh, mass is tripling, so that means G must have triple too. So what the answer here is 9.8 times three, 29.4. Let's plug that in and see, 29.4. Okay, uh, now part C is the one that requires the most amount of work. So it's giving me change of mass density, but then if the mass density is a half, how come its mass is unchanged? So the only way the, if you have earth and you make this thing or density of this earth uh, half, but somehow it still has the same amount of mass, there's only one way that can happen. That uh, if it's a volume has changed. So instead of being the same size, it's now bigger, um, but the same mass. So that's why the density is less. So it's telling me that the density is halved, which hopefully thinking through, you realize that that means the volume has doubled. Good. That's one scaling relationship. So back in this formula, I will know, kinda know what to plug in. Mass doesn't change. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't have a volume as part of its uh, expression. It has radius. So <laughs> you need yet another scaling relationship. Uh, you could actually have the formula for the volume of a sphere, which would uh, tell you the volume of a sphere is equal to four thirds pi r cubed. And actually you don't really need any of this um, four thirds pi. Like that's not necessary for you to do this argument. This is what I mean, it's a scaling argument. You only need to know this power. Basically what you're trying to figure out is how should the radius change so that the volume doubles. Now radius can double. If a radius doubled, then volume would, uh, if a radius doubled, this is what you have, two R cubed. So two cubed, that's eight. So volume would octuple instead of double. So, okay, so, um, so I guess the coefficient here, instead of it being two, what it should be is cube root of two. So then when you cube it, you get two. Okay, now I know how radius is changing. So I imagine putting that in here. So that denominator becomes uh, two to the power of one third RE, the whole thing raised to the power of two, which means this coefficient in front becomes two to the power of two thirds RE squared. So the, the numerical factor which modifies G is one over this thing. Everyone follow? Good. 
<laughs> if not, pause, go back a little bit, watch it again. Uh, I, so when you're doing scaling argument, this is where you can be kind of flexible what you write down. It, uh, it's meant to be for a quick mental calculation where you don't get bogged down with, uh, you know, plugging in the numbers that you don't need to plug in. So, all right, one divided by two raised to power of, um, I guess I probably need a parenthesis. Two divided by three, okay, equal. Okay, so 0 0.62996, that's the factor that applies to G, which is 9.8, 9.8. So 6.174. And that's the correct answer. So uh, this kind of scaling argument can be really quick, uh, really efficient. It, uh, once you get used to it, once you, um, once you learn how to uh, make a use of this type of argument, it, um, it, 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 uh, this is how we physicists like to think. So um, you get kind of questions like this. I think in the last exam, you saw some questions that are like a scaling argument in terms of kinetic energy. I remember some multiple choice questions that had you use the scaling argument. Um, 